Thank you all for coming. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, how to make your own little transaction uh, across multiple servers using uh, just uh, Python and uh, Postgres. So let me introduce myself. Um, that's me. Uh, my background is in uh, chemical informatics. Uh, I worked on software for uh, drug discovery. Uh, then I co-founded a uh, machine learning startup. Uh, then I worked for <coughs> Twisto, a financial startup. I was there uh, since it was uh, about 20-person company uh, until it was uh, sold. Uh, I helped it uh, scale up uh, uh, technically uh, across uh, multiple countries. And now I work uh, for a company called uh, Monitora. We do uh, media monitoring. Uh, and still, again, it's a small company, mostly Czech Republic, Slovakia. And we are wo working on uh, building uh, a worldwide product. So that's what I do mostly. Uh, I help uh, companies uh, to scale up uh, from a small startup to, to a major company on the technological level. Um, and uh, with my wife, we are also uh, organizing courses, mostly for uh, people who want to, to learn programming, but who do not want to become uh, programmers. So in Monitora, uh, what do we do? We scan the internet, we, we watch uh, uh, for uh, news, uh, um, for uh, printed news, for online news, social networks, and so on, so that we can answer the question, what uh, do they write about me, as if I'm a big company, a politician, whoever? Uh, we can uh, give you the top news from today. We can perform analysis on, uh, on, uh, on the articles. Uh, on the back end, it means um, we need to, to do a lot of crawling. We do OCR, uh, a lot of interesting tech. Uh, the deduplication of uh, articles across the web is, is an interesting problem. Uh, we do a lot of uh, machine learning to recognize what the article is about, to be able to summarize it. Uh, we search uh, large amounts of uh, texts. Um, and what is interesting in this company is that uh, we are a small team at the moment. It's six people on the back end. And we want to, to remain a small team as we build um, a worldwide product. Uh, currently, we are looking for one DevOps person, so if anyone is interested. Um, what scale are we talking about? At the moment, uh, we are mostly Czech Republic and Slovakia, partially uh, Germany and other countries, and we have uh, more than six terabytes in a Postgres database, and we are aiming for uh, 50 times or 100 times, or 100 times uh, more to be able to, to scale it uh, to, the, to the whole world. So for this, we use uh, a distributed database, so we want to scale it uh, horizontally uh, because that big server would be possible but uh, a bit unwieldy. Uh, we chose uh, Citus. Uh, it's a Postgres extension. You can put uh, only some tables uh, to the dis distributed mode. Uh, so you have a clear migration path from your existing uh, Postgres database. But uh, some of the more complex joins between uh, the tables which are on different servers uh, might be limited. And uh, uh, I like to understand how the technology I use works uh, on a deeper level. So here, we will be doing something similar to what uh, Citus does, but implementing it uh, by, by ourselves. So let's build a toy example. Let's build a piggy bank. Uh, we will have some, some users with their accounts. Um, each account has a balance. And we want to be able to safely transfer money uh, across, across the accounts. But because we are a piggy bank, we do not lend money. We do not allow our drafts. So we, we want to, to be able to, um, to, to move money and not lose any. But we will be making it distributed across multiple servers. So first, uh, we need to decide how we will tr uh, distribute the data themselves. So for this, we can use uh, the sharding approach uh, and just make the same table structure on, on every, every worker server. So we have here uh, two servers, and uh, each of them uh, has a table of accounts with their balances, but uh, each server stores only half of the data. And how do we decide uh, which server should uh, store, store uh, which, which row? Uh, we will simply 
uh, take a hash of the of the account name and uh, take some operation that, uh, that will deterministically des uh, decide where where to put it. So in Python, we would do it uh, uh, this way. We define uh, what uh, uh, what shards do we have? Uh, which which workers uh, should they be placed on? We define a helper function. We call it worker for account. And uh, this function will uh, take a, a name of the account and return uh, the, the, the ID of the, of the worker or ID of the shard. And there is another uh, helper function, just it's called SQL, and uh, it will just take uh, a name of the worker or ID of the worker and uh, SQL commands to execute on that worker. It will come in handy later. I'm not showing the, the implementation uh, for, for the second function. Uh, there will be a link uh, to the code uh, uh, if you want to play with it at the end. So first we want to um, put uh, some, some money into account. We want to, to create, create an account uh, for, for a person. Uh, that's, that's easy. We'll, we just uh, need to know uh, which, which worker um, manages that account and uh, we want to, to route uh, the, the insert query to the right, right worker. That's fine, we know the, the hash function, we know which, which worker it is, so it's, it's a matter of, of, this, of the single server. Now uh, we, we want to, to do an operation which spans multiple servers. Uh, for example, we want to, to know how much money people have at our bank, so how much money we might be uh, forced to, to pay if they come uh, and ask for their money. So, yeah, that's, again, that's kind of easy. We, we just uh, uh, list uh, all of the workers that we have, and we go across the workers, ask them for, for their, their sum uh, of the balances, and just, just report it. That's fine. Okay. So it was fine, case closed, we can ho go home, we have our piggy bank across multiple servers. Um, but what if one of the servers fail? Uh, I will be talking mostly about uh, what, what happens uh, when, when something fails, because that's why we do transactions. Uh, so one of the workers went kaboom, and uh, we, can not longer, we can no longer connect to it. Um, it's bad, we lost half of our data because we have two workers. Uh, how do we deal uh, with that in, uh, in Postgres? We can do a replication. Uh, just a standard tool uh, for, for Postgres database. We, we, we replicate uh, data from uh, one server to, to another and uh, we do it uh, independently for, for each of the, of the shard, shard workers. So, so when, uh, when uh, one of the servers fail, we have some mechanism to route the traffic to the other one. It can be a, a proxy, it can be a virtual IP that moves, it can be a DNS uh, name that, uh, that allows us to, to say, okay, hey, this, this is the, the worker one, uh, the worker one is now on, on a different server. Um, there are standard tools uh, for, for Postgres that, that do it, uh, we use uh, Patroni, uh, but uh, if you use uh, Kubernetes, there is uh, Crunchy uh, Postgres uh, operator, or uh, Patroni also has uh, Kubernetes support. So this is something that uh, you'll probably want to do because uh, if you have multiple servers, there is a higher probability that at least one of them will fail. But it's uh, a problem that can be managed. A uh, short diversion, the CAP theorem. Uh, just uh, raise me uh, your hand who has uh, never heard of uh, CAP. Okay, so it's a, it's a theoretic uh, theorem um, which says that uh, in, uh, in case of uh, network partition, some, some of the servers cannot reach the other servers. Maybe the network failed somewhere, maybe they are just too busy. Some of the servers cannot talk to, 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 to all the others. Uh, you have to choose between uh, either consistency of your data or availability. Because uh, if you cannot reach the other part of your cluster, that means 
that uh, either you, you stop and wait uh, until, until you can reach them for, because they, they may have um, uh, newer data uh, than, than the part you can reach, or uh, you, you say, oh well, we know some older, maybe older value of the data, so we can serve it from, from the part of cost that we know. So uh, there, there are a lot of trade-offs and a lot of places where you can decide if you want to lean more towards the consistency or more towards the, the, the availability part of, of the problem. Um, for example, when we are doing replication, uh, then we can do either synchronous or asynchronous rep replication. If we are making uh, replicas synchronous, that means that uh, we will need to wait until all the replicas have uh, confirmed that they have the data which, which we are writing. Uh, so that means if the replica fails, we need to, uh, to wait until we know that uh, either it failed for good or uh, until it, it recovers. And at that moment, we, do not, uh, we, do not, uh, we cannot uh, continue writing. So that means we are more towards the consistency part. Uh, or we can make asynchronous replicas and we are more available. If you are interested more into this, this topic of distributed systems and uh, uh, these trade-offs, uh, there is uh, this uh, Jepson.io, it's uh, a company uh, by Cal Kingsbury, the person who is uh, uh, very knowledgeable and uh, uh, has um, uh, very accessible uh, talks and uh, blog posts about this topic. Uh, so, okay, so we made um, a replica, and now we can add uh, an, assumption, an assumption or two uh, to our uh, piggy bank. So in order to be able to, to build the distributed transactions, we will make the assumption that the node, the server, doesn't lose uh, the data it committed. Once you, once, uh, you received um, a confirmation of a commit, or data, database commit, uh, it will be never lost. And if some node will fail, it will recover eventually. Maybe from a replica, but it will recover. So we will use the, we will we'll rely on these assumptions. Okay. So this is our function to transfer money from one account to another. The accounts may be on a on a different servers. So we will need to find uh, a worker uh, for the, the destination ac account. Uh, we add the money that we transfer, we need to find the worker for uh, the source account, we need to subtract the money that we transfer. It's fine, right? What, what, could, what could go wrong? Nothing, no. Unless the server fails. So yeah, we, we added money to, to one account and uh, the, the, other, uh, the other account didn't get uh, debited because uh, yeah, we, we get uh, an exception in, in our Python code, but the data is already written, so we do not do anything and just, just lose money. This could happen also when we would uh, want to transfer a larger amount of money than the balance is, because here uh, in the bottom part, the, the database constraints that we say that uh, the, money, the, the balance must be always positive, uh, it would fail. So here uh, we, would, we would lose money. So how can we... Uh, do it better. In uh, plain Postgres, if you, you would have just one server, you would uh, insert begin and, the, and uh, commit uh, to, to wrap those two commands in a transaction. And it either uh, happens all the way or doesn't happen at all. Um, and this is something uh, to, what we want to do across the service. Uh, luckily for us, uh, Postgres has a feature uh, that uh, supports exactly this use case. We want to prepare the transaction uh, across all the servers. We want to know that it will succeed. The, the servers should guarantee us that uh, they, are, they have the data, they will not lose them, and that uh, the transaction doesn't violate anything, that it will safely commit. So once we have the tra this, this uh, confirmation from all the workers that, that are part of the transaction, we, we commit them all, again, uh, sequentially. So uh, the function 
that we have uh, would work like this. For, for, one, for, for each of the servers, we will uh, create a transaction. We will uh, execute our, our SQL code, which is relevant to, to that, that particle server. And we will append uh, this, this transaction to a list of transactions uh, to commit in the second step. So it's fine, right? Works. Um, if did, we didn't get any exception, we go and uh, go over the list and commit everything. Um, if something went wrong, we roll back those transactions that we have. Fine, right? What could go wrong? Yeah, something can go wrong. So um, what if we fail? Yeah, if, re remember, we have a list of transactions uh, in, in the memory, and uh, the code, the, 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 the computer, where we run this Python code, can fail at any time again. There may be a bug in our code. Uh, the, the computer may catch, catch fire. Uh, so at, these are four discrete steps. So we have three, three uh, places where we can fail. And uh, because uh, the, the database guarantees us that the, the transaction will safely commit, that means that it still holds the locks. So for example, if we change the balance, we cannot, uh, and, and we, we called this uh, prepare commit on, on one server, then we cannot modify the account from any other transaction at all. So if we fail after, after uh, the first prepare, that means that uh, this account on that server will be locked forever, and uh, we, will not we will not be able to, to touch it until an admin comes and uh, unlocks it for us. So, uh, uh, what do we do? How do we fix this problem? Well, we, who uh, manage the other servers, have to be a database as well. We have to, to remember what we did, and in each of these steps, we, we have to be able uh, to, to recover and, and continue. So, yeah, we will extend the assumption that the nodes don't lose committed data and that don't fail forever, including the coordinator node, including us. Even though we are not storing any data for the piggy bank, we need to store some data uh, regarding the distributed transactions. Uh, yeah, this is this first uh, part is uh, something that I uh, have been talking about already. That uh, uh, there is a there is a problem that. Uh, the transaction may take a uh, longer time than, than you are used to. So uh, from the moment uh, you have made some change on, the, on, on one of the servers until the moment that, the, that all the servers have, uh, have made their work and, uh, and you are committing the prepared transaction, all your uh, locks that you hold in the transactions are still, still locked. So, so you cannot, uh, you, you have to wait for them. Um, and if the coordinator does not uh, serialize the access or does not do something clever uh, with regards to, to, the, um, uh, to, to the transactions, the changes on those different servers may be visible um, not atomically. Because as you see, uh, when we have, uh, when we have these, these steps that we commit the prepared transactions, there is no way to do them uh, at one moment. We can guarantee that they will either be applied all or none of them, but we cannot guarantee that if someone goes directly to, to that worker server and uh, asks it for the state, that uh, it will be synchronized uh, with, uh, with the other workers. And again, this is where we touch the CAP theorem. Uh, we, can, uh, we can let the clients do this uh, uh, without uh, the synchronization, and they might get uh, not consistent view of the database, or uh, we can, um, or, or we can um, uh, handle this somehow in the coordinator and make everyone go through the coordinator and somehow serialize uh, the, the access. So um, this is um, 
all for, for the talk. Thank you for listening to me. Uh, there is a link uh, to, the, to the example code that I was, uh, I was showing. You can play with it. I can do a short demo now. And um, if, you, if you are interested more in, in that, uh, go uh, find me here uh, in the hallway uh, after the talk, uh, or maybe, maybe here in this room, because I think there will be uh, no talk after that. And uh, I can go through uh, it with you in, in more, more uh, detail. So I will just uh, show a small, uh, small demo. How does, how does it work? Oh, actually, uh, are there any questions at, at this moment? I may uh, answer the questions now. Okay. Uh -huh. Why not also delegate sharding to the database itself? Yeah, so the question is uh, that we are handling uh, sharding at the application level and replication at the database level, so why not uh, uh, delegate sharding to the, to the database level? Actually, this is what we do with Citus. Uh, there is this tool called Citus, the extension to Postgres, uh, and uh, you interact uh, with it with plain SQL. So it makes uh, some tables that, that look like they are there, but they are just empty, and it, uh, it passes the SQL queries and uh, passes them on to, to, the, to the other servers. That's what we are doing. But uh, somebody uh, had, to write, uh, had to write it. The database is an application as well. So here I'm just making a toy, toy example with, with, with Python, how we would do it. But uh, what we are actually using in production uh, looks like a database, but there is an application code doing exactly that. Okay, uh, right. follow up on that. Uh, how <laughs> does that preparation transaction work with Shard? Uh, if you, uh, for the actual production code, it makes sense because everything is without a database. But in the actual toy example, you're handling sharding in the application level. Can uh, can get my head around how preparation transaction would work. Because you might be, in the example you showed, you might be transferring money from uh -huh. something that is in shard A to shard B. Yeah. But one shard might not know that the other exists. Yeah, so the question is, uh, I'm not sure if I understand the question, so I'll try to, to repeat it. Uh, so uh, the question is, uh, how, do the sh how do one shard know about the other? And, uh, yeah, how does that relate to the preferred transaction statement? How do you make a transaction happen at all? How do I make a transaction happen at all uh, if the shards don't know it about each other? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's where the coordinator comes into play. The, the coordinator uh, knows about, uh, about uh, the, the shards, and the coordinator is the one uh, who uh, says, okay, this shard, please uh, subtract the money. Okay, this shard, please uh, add the money. Okay, so everything is fine. This shard, uh, commit, commit it. This chart committed. Okay. okay, so there was a question. I'm afraid I didn't get the answer for the concern to write uh, as the last one. How do you uh, ensure that the, the database is committed uh, when you run this transaction? So the coordinator creates something like a huge block or serializer who serializes all the requests and commits one by one. Um, I, uh, so the question is uh, how uh, to make a consistent view of the database uh, across uh, all the transactions. Um, I'm not sure how this actually works in, in, in Citus. It definitely takes some logs um, by itself. So, so it excludes some transactions uh, from the others. I am not sure at which level exactly. Because uh, on the like, most strict level you would have to serialize all the transactions um, one after after another, but you can be more clever uh, to uh, ser uh, to wait only for the transactions that conflict with with, with each other, um, or you can just let it be and uh, accept that um, at some point some of the data might be inconsistent. I am not sure how exactly this this works uh, uh, in in Citus. Uh, but uh, you, as an engineer who would be developing uh, this kind of system, 
you have the, the, the possibility to make a different trade-offs and decide for yourself, depending on if the application can tolerate it or not. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, if you let it to, to, the level, to the developers, there may be a ton of bug, yes. Uh, but uh, if you're architecting a system, you need to know uh, whether, uh, what kind of inconsistency can it tolerate? Because uh, consistency at, a, at all cost is slow, very slow. For example, uh, in, in our case with the, with the online articles, uh, we do not care that much about uh, consistency between the different articles themselves. We do care about the consistency between an article and its related metadata. So we care about uh, strict consistency in some pockets of the, of the database. Uh, so for us, if we are consistent within one shard, it's actually usually okay for most of the operations it's okay. Uh, in our case, as the media monitoring company, we do not, uh, we do not usually need uh, the strict consistency across the shards. For some cases, yes, but they are, but they are rare. We, pr yeah, we, we, we prefer um, to be able to, to. Yeah, I, I will be happy, happy to, discuss, to discuss with uh, it with you. We, we evaluated uh, several things. Okay, any other questions? Uh huh. Yeah, I, I think that you need to see the transaction log even for your uh, coordinator, basically. Uh huh. You need to build yeah. this whole transaction log. Yeah, yeah, this, this, is, this is exactly how it, how it works. Uh, the, the coordinator basically, here, uh, the coordinator remembers what, what it did, stores it in a, in a database table. And uh, if it fails and, uh, and boots up, first thing it does, it, it, uh, it, sh it looks at, at, the, at the transaction log and uh, goes uh, clean up uh, the, the transactions that should not be there and commits the transaction that should be committed. Yeah, so, uh, uh -huh. And you have only one access point to one coordinator for the uh, You. The question is whether you have one access point through one coordinator through, through all the databases. You have to go through some coordinator. Uh, again, depending on your trade-offs, how much consistency do you need? The coordinator may be itself distributed. If you do not need that much uh, consistency and you want higher throughput, you can have uh, a distributed uh, coordinator. But if you want uh, more consistency, you go through through one one coordinator. This is uh, this is not not about Citus. This is uh, uh, about the, the problem space in, in general. Like if you want more throughput, uh, you can get it with, with more coordinators. You need to, to have some some place which knows about uh, about the, the shards and is able to coordinate them. Uh, but. Uh, uh, it doesn't have to be a single single one if you do not need to um, synchronize um, serializable point of view uh, to the database. Uh, 
So, so, so the question is, uh, uh -huh, so the question is about maintainability. You talked about. Uh, uh, Yeah, yeah, so, so you say that this approach is not, not maintainable. Uh, yeah, I agree with you that this approach is not maintainable and this is not uh, CITES. Uh, this, what I was showing, the Python code, this is uh, my demo here for you. It's about 100, 100 line Python script that implements uh, distributed transactions uh, with a two-phase commit and it's on GitHub and you can, you can play, play with it. Uh, this is, this is not, not CITES. CITES is something that you install into your Postgres and uh, for most part, it behaves uh, the same as uh, the tables were behaving before. Uh, it, it has some limitations. It cannot process some of SQL queries. It cannot, uh, it cannot enforce some of the foreign, foreign key constraints, for example. It cannot, uh, it cannot for example, uh, enforce a unique constraint uh, across shards. But for the application developers, it, uh, it looks uh, uh, like any other SQL table. Uh, so the question is whether we should not use a lock for locking the user balance. Um, not really, because uh, when we use uh, this, this kind of uh, uh, SQL query, uh, where we use uh, balance equals balance plus, plus something, this is, this is atomic, and uh, as soon as you do it, the row is locked. This is how Postgres behaves. Yeah, but you have two uh, operations here. Uh -huh. Uh huh. Uh, you uh, lost uh, uh -huh. uh, the pos uh, possibility to yes, yes, this, uh, this problem. Yeah, this this is why uh, we are doing this uh, this this two phases. That first we we try to do the operation at uh, at uh, all of the servers. Yeah. We do not commit. We just prepare. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. After. Uh huh. Yeah, uh, so uh, if we do just prepare transaction, the, the other users, if you run Postgres in uh, read committed uh, serialization uh, uh, level, then if you do just uh, prepare transaction, then the change is not visible yet. Yeah. It's visible only after you, com you commit, commit prepared. Yeah. But the commit prepared, because you do it across multiple servers, itself is not at, is, you cannot do it atomically. Just, you cannot do it. There, there is no way. So if you need to maintain a consistent uh, balance, a consistent view of the balances across all the system, you have to serialize it uh, in, the, in the coordinator. Yeah, for coordinator, well, here in, in, this, in this case, uh, in, in case of, of this uh, small demo, the question was uh, whether we use uh, event sourcing uh, approach or something different. Uh, you can look at the code. Uh, there is no event sourcing. Uh, we, we just uh, log uh, the, the trend. Well, if you look at the code, it's, it's, uh, there are four Python functions. Uh, they are just called directly, and uh, as, as you go, uh, Across, across these steps, you just log the state so you are able to, to reconstruct it. So yeah, you can tell it's event sourcing in some way. Okay. Uh, if you are in, more interested more in, in that, uh, I'll, be, I'll be here uh, for some time because I do not want to, to compete in the, in the lunch queue, so I'll, I'll be able to, to show you the, the demo itself. Great, thank you. Uh, okay, so one last very quick question. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
before Janet Rose. Yeah. Uh, Mongo does has it exactly as, as Mongo's browser. Yeah. So, so, the, so the question was uh, where we thought about using uh, Mongo and uh, uh, as something that is uh, horizontally scalable by, de by design as opposed to Postgres, where the horizontal scalability is bolted on. Uh, actually, uh, yes, uh, we thought about using Elasticsearch uh, as, uh, as the primary source uh, for the data, but there are uh, two, two, two problems with that. One is that we already have quite a big application which uh, is written using Postgres in mind, uh, several years old and, and so on. Uh, but the bigger problem is that uh, these uh, databases like uh, Elasticsearch, they are not uh, well optimized for relation data. Uh, originally, I thought, let's move everything to, to Elastic. Because, yeah, article and it has some tree, tree structure. It's a document, after all. Uh, not really. You have uh, authors, you have uh, new sources, you have a lot of metadata which are highly relational. Uh, it, 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 uh, it surprised me, actually, how, how much relational it is. We have like 500 tables. And uh, it's, it's much easier to work with, uh, with a SQL database. So instead, we evaluated um, um, Citus uh, as the extension of Postgres and two Postgres-compatible uh, solutions, uh, which are uh, horizontally scalable from the day one. It was uh, Cockroach and, uh, and Yugabyte. All of, all of the, the three uh, are, are cool. Okay. All right, we're out of time. Mm -hmm. So if anyone has any more questions, I think you can find us outside, right? So thank you.